okay so next topic in uh, strength of material that is uh, slope and uh, deflection of a beam so till now we have seen uh, about various types of uh, stresses in the beam particularly beam okay so initially we have seen simple stresses complex stresses next various stresses in beams when it is subjected to bending twisting combination of bending and twisting everything we have seen in the previous classes now in this chapter we will be seeing slope and deflection of a beam okay so it is not uh, we are not calculating for the entire beam at every cross section we will calculate this slope and deflection what is this exact slope and deflection what we are finding in this uh, chapter let us see suppose if i have a beam okay and i apply a load okay obviously this will bend okay obviously this will bend like this uh, out of this uh, out of this uh, chapter i will tell you one interesting thing suppose if you see uh, you are seeing this uh, in the front view right suppose if you see the cross section from the side how the cross section may look initially let us say it is rectangle the cross section is rectangle initially after bending can you guess the shape so generally in your mind i will tell you what it will be here it is compression right so generally the section may be something like this trapezium because on the top you have uh, compression on the bottom you have tension so rectangle might have uh, changed as some trapezium like this you may think but it is wrong surprisingly the shape is this why it is like this means it is because of the poisson's effect in the front view if you have compression because of compression in this plane it will have tension in this plane because of poisson effect okay so this is the side view okay this is one of the previous ies question but a very interesting thing generally we cannot guess it so easily okay okay because of poisson effect okay anyway we'll keep that aside okay now in this chapter what we are exactly finding is uh, deflection and uh, slope slope means uh, rotation rotation of a cross section okay in the first chapter itself i told you there is a difference between deformation and displacement even in the torsion chapter also i have specifically mentioned that you are actually calculating theta which is the rotation of the cross section rotation in this way okay here because of bending it will rotate in this way if this is the cross section because of torsion it should rotate like this so how much rotation we have uh, the cross section is rotated we will calculate theta okay but that is not the shear strain of the section the, the section may or may not got strain that's a different thing we don't need that torsional strain as well we need only torsional stress what we are calculating theta is simply how much it has rotated not how much it has strained without strain also it can simply rotate just similar to that exactly similar to that for a beam if i calculating rotation at this cross section i just mean how much it has rotated that doesn't mean how much it has strained let me show you one difference let me assume this as my cross section okay i will rotate this cross section without straining see like this okay without straining i can rotate the cross section now i will rotate the cross section with the straining see like this now the section got uh, deformed the section shape is changed Defo when it deforms obviously its shape changes right see previously it was rectangle now it got a curve even though it it might remain plain plain section will remain plain that's all plain section will remain plain but it cannot be rectangle after sheared right so this is deformed plane deformed okay you during the deformation also you do get rotation but rotation doesn't mean it got deformed 
what we need is how much the section rotated how much the section rotated that i am interested in i am not interested in how much bending strain it got clear in this chapter second thing displacement of the cross section so displacement doesn't mean because of bending how much this cross section is displaced no this cross section is initially here finally where it is that's all whether this cross section is sheared not sheared that, that doesn't matter for me so without without actually getting sheared how it will get rotation or how it will get uh, deflection means it is because of the deflection or rotation from the adjacent layers just like torsion whatever i told you the rotation will get accumulated from zero or from some value it gets accumulated and this resultant strain will be visible here this is a series of beam if one gets rotated that rotation will continue i hope you are able to understand if this got strain this anole cannot get strain right so the strain will be accumulated to the next layer and finally it may look it is it got strain but actually this the strain in one layer itself can show the strain in another layer uh, rotation in another layer i mean okay so rotation doesn't mean it got strained that's the only thing i want to tell you okay you just want to understand what exactly we are finding here okay slope and deflection of the cross section we are finding okay slope means initially the cross section is rectangle finally how it is okay it can be rectangle finally also but how it is is it rotated or it is like this only if it is like this only the slope is zero if initially it was like this finally it was same rectangle the slope is zero initially it was here but finally it was here it doesn't have slope but it has deflection okay if it is rotated as well as deflected this is the rotation the section is rotated and this much the section is deflected okay this is what i have to find so how to find this so you you understood that just by knowing the bending moment alone here just by knowing the bending moment alone here i cannot find what uh, bending moment or cross section detail i cannot find the slope or deflection because the slope or deflection depends on the uh, loading conditions and the boundary conditions of the other side as well see if i apply a load if i load apply a load l on this it is bending like this if i apply the same load by keeping another kind of support whatever it is see suppose uh, suppose if it is simply supported or uh, what we say overhang beam whatever it is if i keep the same load will i get the same deflection obviously no so this is a cantilever i applied a load at the center it will get some deflection if i keep simply support and apply the same load i got a different deflection i got completely different deflection and different rotation right so so you have to understand that this deflection and rotation depends on the loading conditions on the beam as well as boundary conditions which we already discussed in uh, sfd bmd as well what is boundary condition so the deflection profile of the beam depends on the boundary conditions as well as loading conditions not only about the cross sectional details what is the breadth of the section depth of the section what is the bending moment on the section this is related to particular cross section but that alone is not sufficient to find the slope and deflection of the cross section we have to know the entire loading details of the beam as well as the boundary conditions of the beam okay so how it get affected how we calculate the rotation so initially it was like this now it is like this okay obviously it has rotated to a angle theta so does it mean it got strain no it is not strain if you see the bending moment if you see the bending moment what is the bending moment at this point zero what is the bending moment at this point maximum so here you have maximum bending moment here do not have bending moment without bending moment do we get strain obviously you don't get strain there without strain it is rotated why it is rotated because here you have bending moment all this bending moment will rotate these cross sections will rotate these cross sections now see here bending moment is maximum bending moment is maximum but this is not rotated 
this is not rotated it is exactly like this by symmetry you see there is no slope here does that mean it is not strained no this is the maximum strained cross section in the entire length why this is the maximum bending moment what is the strain formula or stress formula m by i into y so for uh, what is the assumption we take for bending uh, equation it should be within the elastic limit stress is proportional to strain whether it is compression or tension whatever it is okay so strain will be into young's modulus okay obviously for a uh, for all the cross section i is same e is same y is same what is changing only bending moment wherever you have more bending moment obviously that layer will get more strain so this got more strain more bending strain this got but this is not rotated <laughs> this is not rotated because of the rotations from the both sides are equal and opposite it remained like that it remained like that here the the layer is not strained the layer is not strained it is simply rotated like this okay so i hope now you are able to feel the difference between strain and deflection even in torsion equation also whatever i told you z theta by l uh, uh, z theta by l the theta whatever we are calculating is not the strain of the layer it is the rotation of the layer that's all okay so i hope you understood this okay next <coughs> okay now how do we find this uh, rotation or uh, deflection okay so here our aim is to find the deflection and uh, rotation of any cross section we want okay for uh, uh, different kind of loading cases we need to find theta as well as delta okay so how do we find this to understand this first you have to know the basic curvature equation okay so this is the basic curvature equation what is curvature 1 divided by r apart from circular section to find what is the curvature of the equation for curvature of uh, circular section it is simply 1 divided by r but apart from uh, circular section remaining sections will not have radius if i draw a parabola parabola will not have radius so how to find what is the curvature how much tendency of curve it has curve means it is not a straight line right so how to calculate that curvature you understood the what is what do you mean by curvature right why radius is inversely proportional to curvature what is the curvature of this are you seeing any curve for this you are not seeing any curve right the curvature of this is zero curvature of this is zero but radius of this is infinite yes now if i apply small curvature like this now you see the you you will tell me there is small curvature but it has very big radius now you see more curve here you see more curve here it has less radius let me write separately as i have written this already already i told you the same thing in uh, bending stress as well large r less 1 by r r curvature okay okay small r less 1 by r sorry more 1 by r or more curvature you can see more curvature okay among these three which is having more curvature obviously this has more curvature right okay so what is the relation between curvature and deflection means obviously it is there i am we are calling we are calculating this deflection because of the rotation of the cross section because of the bending because of the bending it got rotated because of the rotation we got the deflection okay so how do we find that deflection okay we will see so that is how it is linked to curvature okay this is the basic curvature equation we have okay so how how we find the uh, theta and uh, delta because of bending using this curvature equation let us see okay so the curvature equation looks very complex right so in this complex equation we can see the value of dy by dx whole square is nearly equal to zero because whole square this is only decimal part because in bending equation we assumed that the value of the deflections is very very less so dy by dx whole square also the decimal part square is obviously less okay so this implies 1 by r is equal to what is remaining in the so if you 
place 0 here, what is remaining? Dou square y by dou x square. Okay. So, if you place this as 0, 1 to the power of 3 by 2 remains 1. Okay. So, this becomes d square y by dou square y by dou x square. Okay. Now, from the, I already told you we are calculating deflection because of the bending. Okay. So, from the bending equation, we can get m by e i is equal to 1 by r. So, m by e i is equal to dou square y by dou x square. This is the basic equation we use to find the deflection. What is deflection? Nothing but y. Okay. So, dou square y by dou x square is equal to m by e i. Okay. Now, integration of this dou square y by dou x square with respect to dx okay, will give me dou by dou, x, dou y by dou x. Okay, this is the slope of the cross section wherever it is. Okay. Similarly, again integrating this, again integrating this integration of dou y by dou x into dx integral of m by e i into dx. So, again integrating this give me y which is equal to integral of m divided by e i into dx. Okay. This is called, y is called deflection. This is called slope. Okay. So, this is what we have to find, what I already told you. Okay. So, dy by dx and y is what we act actually need to find in this chapter. Okay. So, how we use these equations to find the deflection standard cases, we will see now. Okay.